Uh, Rambam3000 is also supporting us with two year, uh, two pounds, not euros, two pounds. Obviously, Chato should be writing She-Hulk. This is true. I mean, we've written better shows on these shows every week than this fucking show. It's easier to punch up a show actually than write it from scratch to be. Free. It is, but even if you have the if you have these tools at your discrepancy, like come on, how is this the best you can come up with? Same thing with Rings of Power. Like, how is this the best you can come up with? You know, I, I mean, say what you. I would what about understand. The... I would understand on the She Hulk side of things. They said, okay, this is the pre- premise. It's uh, it's an Alec McBeal lawyer type, uh, mundane stuff, make funny, and then it's just okay, we're going to spend a week pitching how many funny things we can turn the mundane into or how many how many mundane things we can turn into funny and figure out a structure and a theme and, and all that other stuff. Like, I, I don't think they did that. I think they each said, no. what's your subject that you think you can do best? And like some, one person's like, I can do trademarks. I can do fashion. I can do dating. And, and they just went that direction as opposed to trying to get everybody in that room on the same page and just spitball fun ideas that they could explore to break the, break the series down and, and actually give us a, a, a real comedy. Well, I, I talked about it before, but to me, I would have sequestered everybody locked the room until they had figured out what each of the characters were and what their yeah. relationships were to each other before even starting writing a script. Yeah, like who are the characters that we have? Why do we have them? What's the relationship? Right. What do they want? What do they hate? Yep. And go from there. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need a giant the whole notion that in sitcom people put these 50 page backstory, you know, uh, stories together for every single character is nonsense. No one does it. They 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 start off with the just the No, but you do have a character idea. bible usually though. No, and eventually you get Rarely is there a character bible until later because real sitcom yeah. writers find it out as they go. Yeah, it's, it's actually a, the Bible. Well, for a sitcom, I can understand. Yeah, for a sitcom, the Bible's built as they go. Actually, even for an hour long, the Bible's built as they go. But they do a like a kind of a pre- preliminary, which is usually no more than twenty pages, uh, yeah. if I recall. But yeah. on that note, though, something like She Hulk or Rings of Power, where you have a ton to work off of, I think maybe a a show Bible is a good place to start. I mean, what comes to mind to me is He Man. They started with the show Bible first. They they didn't get right into the show. They they got all the characters together. They figured out what all this all works because they didn't really have anything to work from. Which so the guys of, at filmation, the of... filmation I'm talking about. Sorry. Oh okay. Yeah, the original filmation version. So they sat down. They figured all this out. They created the Bible. Then they did the show. So I I get it in in certain cases like yeah a comedy or a show that you're kind of creating Something yourself. For fantasy and sci-fi, I can see them doing a little bit of that because it's you like, should have you need some a foundation kind of... of lore to to work from. Exactly, but exactly. I again, it, it I, I have seen a couple of of show bibles. They're not very long. The ones that I make, I try to keep you know between fifteen and sixteen pages because I know it's not going to be the same if it gets picked up and goes. But I have seen some with clients where they're like sixty to one hundred and sixty pages, and it's it's and I get a lot this of it's is, redundant, and it just goes too far, and you don't need anything. And there's thing. people in the chat saying, "Oh, it's a sitcom," and I get that. This is supposed to be a sitcom, but it's also a sitcom set in a world that has fifteen years of fucking lore already built into it. Why aren't they using that? Well, right, like that's what I'm getting at here is. <sighs> Even like a situation where you're right, script, it doesn't have to be like a huge Bible, even if you just set up rules, right? Because that's something that Robert Shea said they made the mistake with Nightmare on Elm Street was when they went to part two, they didn't really have all the rules set in place and and, and they let things get off the rails. So by the time they got to part three, they actually sat down and said, no, these are the fucking rules. Freddie can do this. Freddie can't do that. Freddie can do this. Freddie can't do that. From here on out, we follow these rules. And they were all rules that were set in the first film basically and it's the same kind of thing here it's it, whether it's the rules for the character the rules for the lore the rules for the how the magic works it's like even rings of power i was listening to you guys talk about it earlier you don't even know what the fuck's going on because that tells me that the showrunners don't know what the fuck's going on or if they do they certainly fail to communicate it well it's pretty easy to make a fucking story when you got a motivation there but when you have the elements of okay like we just said like she hulk for instance you have a show set in a universe that has been building for the past 15 or so years, right? Why are we not utilizing that fact? The one time they did was with uh, Blonsky, and that was practically a throwaway. 
Like, yeah, he was a big portion of the episode, but what did, did, did we really get out of that? It was a minor little tie to Shang-Chi, right? Like, they made the joke of this show. It's like, it's not going to be a bunch of cameos, and that's exactly what it is. It's cameo the fucking show. Then embrace that, right? Like, the, the, I, the whole idea of, like, Deadpool, like, that was the funny elements of Deadpool, too, is when he would, you know, have the X-Men people would show up and stuff like that, right? Like, why are we not doing those kind of things here? Who gives a shit if Wong keeps showing up? I don't need Wong 20 times. Give me something that's funny. I'd love to see, you know, like, one of these characters sue one of the others, like we said before. It would make fucking sense. It would be funny to watch something like that play out. What if we're playing out the Spider-Man No Way Home thing where Jon Favreau's character, Happy, has to deal with that accusation that was brought up in the the film? Anything like that. Yeah. Or, or two superheroes that have come up with the same costume. Yeah. <laughs> or the, yeah there you Fucking go. brilliant. Exactly. Like, how hard is this? We're doing this on the fly. Yeah, I mean, to see two superheroes being bitchy to each other would be hilarious. And being mistaken for another one because they wear identical outfits. Yes. That's yeah. what happens to <laughs> That's, That's what right. I mean. It's the petty, goofy shit we normally wouldn't get to see. It's kind of like why my, my review of the Orville. I said, why did I like the Orville? Because it's Star Trek, but we actually get to see the toilet for once. And what I meant by that is we get to see the other side of things we normally don't get to see, and we get to get to laugh a little bit about it. And that's what this show should have been, it sounds like to me. And I'm, I'm sorry for the ramp. But- the, the, the fact that, um, uh, well titania or whatever you know yes the copyright of the she hulk thing that that's that's sort of funny in the same way that we're just discussing it but two superheroes who have a copyright claim against each other that's what fits into the superhero uh uh, law division of this company that's what makes sense i remember when i was doing a sitcom on parliament or trying to to do one and uh, it was a massive failure uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, here's another good one. Two, two, like a, a sidekick breaking up with his oh, <laughs> and 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 deciding that they've got some uh, uh, skin in the game. Yeah. Oh, see, that is brilliant. That a sidekick They're keeping me down. They won't let me out of my contract. That's right. That's right. I I don't want to be the sidekick anymore. <laughs> or the sidekick feels they have some ownership in the superheroes IP. I made you. I'm the one that made you. No one listened to me. Or a superhero has passed away and the sidekick tries to take the mantle, but there's a whole legal battle because oh. the superhero has a child that's like, I want to take the mantle. <laughs> that's, oh yeah, the 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 terrible, uh, the, the, or the... And how the much reality. fun could they have with that considering how much we gripe about fucking all the swap outs and stuff, right? Or like the, they could have the, uh, had some fun 20, with that. 21 year old gold digger that married the superhero at the end of his life. <laughs> the, and a Nicole Smith of uh, yes, superheroes. or the That's guy right. that sues because he didn't get he got rejected from the Avengers, and you don't even for need, whatever you reason don't, you, you don't know yeah. superpowers in action. You just need to have the, the person described. You know, this is the only person who can magnetize aluminum. You know, well, and that's what we were saying from the start. It should have been done like Night Court. That way, it doesn't oh, have to cost exactly, a lot. Exactly right, but the mundane is what's funny. So when I was working on this sitcom called In Opposition, um, uh, I didn't like any of the premises that the the writer was coming up with. He was a like a master jokester. And I said, this is way over the top. I sent him to Ottawa, got him to um, uh, spend a week with one of the par- parliamentarians. And he was, he was sending me back stories like um, someone, a senator died, and now there's a fight over the parking space because it's really close to the parliament. <laughs> I went, God damn, that's the story I want. And then another uh, MP got pencils monogrammed with his name and got everybody jealous in parliament. And I went, fuck, that's what's funny is these powerful individuals arguing over monogrammed pencils. Yeah, when they should be you know, representing their constituents. That's the right. joke. Yeah. That's the joke. And unfortunately, the uh, the writer who I drove to death, he, he died because of me, um, <laughs> uh, uh, just didn't get it. Didn't understand that those mundane aspects could have become giant, you know, stories for 22 minutes. See, and that's kind of where Cobra Kai comes from, Paul. Right. Like, sure, it's not always mundane stuff, but sometimes it is like Johnny is a very 
simple character in that respect, right? Like to him, he sees the world in a certain way. Once you once you understand that, it's very easy to write him into humorous situations. Yep. Yep. He's the Archie Bunker of the show, right? Like right. you know exactly what you need to do with him. And and that's what I'm saying about this show. She is a specific character. We for those who know who she is, she is like a Deadpool esque type character, right? You can have that kind of fun with this character. Oh, yeah. Why are they not? Like it, it, embrace it if you're gonna do it, but we need to move on anyhow. But